Welcome to Rod's Tree Tours of the University of Nevada, Reno Arboretum. This is the Around the Nevada Historical Society audio tree tour. It begins near the front door of the Nevada Historical Society, goes clockwise around both of its parking lots, and ends at the north end of the building next to North Virginia Street. There is a pause of two seconds after each tree to let you get to the next tree, but if you haven't yet reached the tree, or if you need a little extra time to locate or contemplate it, please press pause until you are ready, then press play. Okay, let's get started. Look for a short weeping conifer at the bottom of the ramp to your right as you exit the front door of the Nevada Historical Society at number one on the map. This is Weeping Norway Spruce, scientific name Picea abes pendula, a cultivar of the species native to Northern Europe. Plant sellers have an astonishing variety of dwarf and weeping Norway spruces for sale. The weepers are popular because of their shape, which varies from tree to tree. Turn around and walk up the ramp about halfway. On your right, at number two on the map, is a tree shrub, a woody plant that can have either tree or shrub form. This is curly mountain mahogany, scientific name Cercocarpus letifolius, a native of the Sierra Nevada like the three trees ahead. Note the small fleshy leaves, which indicate that it is quite drought tolerant. The best feature of this tree is its seed pods. Some of them are curled at the tip like a butterfly's proboscis. There are four of these adjacent to the building. Continue on the ramp to about 10 feet past the front door. On your right, at number three, is another Sierra Nevada native and the first pine on this tour, the three-needled Jeffrey pine, scientific name Pinus jeffreyi. It is the predominant tree on the eastern side of the Sierra. It was logged for the Comstock Silver Boom in nearby Virginia City and, as a result, the Lake Tahoe area was basically deforested. Next to it, at number four, is the second pine, the two-needled lodgepole pine, scientific name Pinus contorta variety Mariana. It grows anywhere from sea level to tree line and is the first conifer to appear along highways where road construction has disturbed the soil, and these trees are present in the adjoining forest. Note that the trunk is dark and the tree does not grow straight up. At the corner of the building at number five are three quaking aspens, scientific name Populus tremuloides, the most widely distributed broadleaf tree in the U.S. The quaking of the leaves is caused by the connection between the leaf and the branch which allows the leaf to turn in the wind. This tree has reliable yellow fall color. Some trees have orange color. This tree sends out root suckers all around the tree, cloning itself, and makes thickets. This is why one particular aspen tree is said to be the largest organism on earth. Please press pause and turn left on the sidewalk next to the parking lot. When you get to a white barked tree at number six, the first of three maples in a row, press play. This is red maple, scientific name Acer rubrum, native to the eastern and midwestern U.S. This tree is tough, grows quickly, is cold hardy, and provides reliable red fall color, which is possibly why there are so many red maples on campus. There are perhaps 100 cultivars of this species with different leaf shapes, some of which provide orange-red fall color. The small tree about 50 feet farther, the small tree about 50 feet farther at number seven with maple-shaped leaves is Deborah maple, scientific name Acer platinoides Deborah, a cultivar of the European native Norway maple. It originated as a seedling of Schwedler maple, scientific name Acer platinoides, Sch scientific name Acer platinoides Schwedleri, 
Its scientific name, Acer platinoides schwedleri. Its leaves come out bright red in spring. Its leaves come out bright red in spring, turn green in summer, and turn yellow to bronze in fall. A mature Schwedler maple tree is on the Hilliard Plaza tree tour. A few feet farther at number eight is Freeman Maple, scientific name Acer X Freemani, a hybrid of two eastern U.S. natives, red maple and silver maple. It has been very popularly planted recently because many landscape architects consider it superior to either parent. This particular tree was planted in 2016 as a memorial tree. The conifer at the nearest corner of the parking lot at number 9 is the third pine on the tour and first white pine, a pine with five needles in a bundle. This is Southwestern white pine, scientific name Pinus stroboformis, native to Arizona, New Mexico, and northern Mexico. Like many other white pines, it has a silver stripe on the needles, which makes the overall needle color silver green. At the next corner of the parking lot, and at number 10, is the fourth pine, the second with two needles in a bundle, Austrian pine. Scientific name Pinus nigra, native to Europe, native to Europe. Austrian pine is the most commonly planted tree species in this area because it grows quickly to medium size and is resistant to pests. Note that the, gray, note that the trunk is gray and is straight. Please press pause, turn right, and proceed to the parking lot entrance at number 11, then press play. The fifth pine, and the third with two needles in a bundle, is Scotch pine, scientific name Pinus sylvestris. It is very commonly planted locally and is often confused with the Austrian pine at number eight. There are two major differences between these two trees. Notice that the Scotch pine's upper limbs are brown, Austrians are gray, and the upper limbs do not grow straight up like the Austrians. The sixth pine, with five needles in a bundle at number 12, is eastern white pine, scientific name Pinus strobus, native to northeastern North America. Because the wood is easily sawn yet strong, settlers used it for everything from fences to lumber to ship masts to cabinets. If you would like to, you can take a detour from the tour and walk back to the back of the parking lot to compare the eastern white pine with the southwestern white pine at number seven. Southwestern white pine is a stockier tree with gray-green needles and upswept branches. Eastern white pine is a more willowy tree with yellow-green needles and more or less flat branches. On this detour, you can also compare the scotch pine with the two nearby two needle pines on this tour, Austrian pine at number 10 and lodgepole pine at number four. Please press pause and walk across the small parking lot at the museum entrance. When you get to a fairly large tree all by itself at number 13, between the parking lot and the street, press play. This is thornless honey locust, Scientific name Gladitia triacanthos, variety inermis. Native to the eastern and midwestern U.S., the species has thorns, and so is no longer sold. The thornless form has replaced it. Honey locust is an unusual fruit in that it has some leaves that are pinnately compound, that is, with a central stem with 20 to 30 leaflets attached to it and some that are bipinnately compound, with a central stem and side stems with leaflets on them. It has zigzag twigs. The next four trees in line at number 14 are columnar red maples, scientific name Acer rubrum columnari. The species is native to the eastern and midwestern U.S., is tough, grows quickly, is cold hardy, 
and provides reliable red fall color. This cultivar has a more upright shape than the tree shown at number six. Head toward North Virginia Street. Between the building and the street is a very interesting line of both native and introduced trees, shrubs, and tree shrubs. The first one, the short wide white pine near the corner at number 15 is Rocky Mountain Bristlecone Pine, scientific name Pinus aristata. It is a native of the western United States between the Rockies and western Utah. It is a white pine. It has five needles in a bundle. It is one of two state trees, though not native to Nevada, because Great Basin Bristlecone Pine and Rocky Mountain Bristlecone Pine were thought to be one species when the state tree designation was made. One difference between the two is that Rocky Mountain Bristlecone Pine has tiny pitch flecks. If you touch them before warned, the pitch will not come off until you wash your hands. The next several trees and tree shrubs on this tour are between the building and North Virginia Street and are best seen walking on the grass. They were likely planted when the Nevada Historical Society building was constructed in 1967. At number 16, opposite the first building, Rib, are two kinds of juniper. One appears yellowish and the other grayish. Here they are side by side so you can compare them. Juniper has a number of species and even more cultivars, so identification is difficult, but let me try. Based on my understanding that the landscape designer wanted native species planted next to the museum, I believe that the yellower juniper is Utah juniper, scientific name Juniperus osteospermum, native to the Great Basin, including areas around Reno, and the grayer juniper is Rocky Mountain juniper, scientific name Juniperus scapulorum, native to the Rocky Mountains and Utah. Past the two junipers, just past the second rib at number 17, is a native tree shrub, blue elderberry, scientific name Sambucus cerulea. This tree shrub has white flowers in spring, quite edible blueberries in summer, and yellow color in fall. It rarely grows to tree size, but there is a Nevada State Big Tree Blue Elderberry. The next tree, between the second and third ribs at number 18, may appear similar to the honey locusts, but the leaflets are rounder and larger, about an inch in diameter. During summer, individual leaflets may turn yellow. This is black locust. Scientific name Robinia pseudoacacia, native to the eastern U.S. This tree has been one of the most popular large trees since it was first introduced nearly 400 years ago, but it has become unpopular because it has weak wood, is prone to rot, and is hard to kill. It is a thicket former and suckers readily. After two more junipers and just past the fourth rib at number 19 is another Sierra Nevada native shrub, Golden Current, scientific name Ribes orion. This shrub rarely grows to tree size because it yearly sends out multiple stems resulting in thickets rather than concentrating its energy in making a trunk. It has small yellow flowers and tasty one-third inch black berries. Ask the birds. Its fall color is a showy yellow, red, or orange red. The shrub at number 20 is Creek Dogwood, scientific name Cornus sericea, native to North America, including the Sierra Nevada. Like golden currant, it makes thickets. It has tiny white flowers in round, flat topped clusters in spring and attractive fall colors of orange, red, and purple. Ahead, at number 21, and opposite the last rib of the building, is the fourth two-needle pine, two-needle pinion pine, scientific name Pinus edulis. This tree is native to the southern Rocky Mountains, and the two on campus are both on this tour. 
This tree interbreeds with single-leaf pinyon pine, one of the two Nevada state trees, and a tree which is not yet represented on campus. The tree at the corner of the building before the recess at number 22 has small half-inch cones. It is white alder, scientific name Alnus rhombifolia, another Sierra Nevada native. This tree grows best in riparian, waterside, zones because its roots need water all year. The Nevada State Champion is on the Liquad Tree Tour. The conifer with flattened sprays of leaves at number 23 is incense cedar, scientific name Calocedrus decurrens. This Sierra Nevada native is not really a cedar, and that is a good example of why I am giving scientific names on my tree tours. It has fan-like branchlets and red-brown fibrous and deeply furrowed bark. Its cones are very unusual. They have a central scale with two other scales curving away from it. The low shrub with three lobed one to two inch leaves at number 24 is fragrant sumac, scientific name Rus aromatica. This native of eastern U.S. has numerous stems coming out of the ground. It has many root suckers and tends to form thickets. Its name comes from an aroma emanating when the leaves and twigs are bruised. It has tiny yellow flowers appearing before the leaves in spring, attractive fall colors of orange, red, and purple, and small red berries which may persist into winter. Ahead, under an incense cedar at number 25, is choke cherry, scientific name Prunus virginiana, a Sierra Nevada native and thicket former. Properly pruned, this tree shrub can be turned into a small tree. This particular plant may be a volunteer, spread by Mother Nature, since these plants are infrequently sold commercially. A purple-leaved cultivar is a popular landscape and street tree. The Nevada State Champion is on the Fleischmann Ag Quad Tree Tour. On the hill, about 40 feet from the end of the building at number 26, is a small tree with maple-like leaves, big tooth maple. Scientific name Acer grandidentatum, a native of interior western North America. Like its close relative, the sugar maple, it has good fall color, golden yellow to red. There is one more tree on this tour. For the daring, it may be reached by clambering up the steep dirt path at the end of the building and turning left at the fire plug, going down the sidewalk about 50 feet to an incense cedar. For the less daring, retrace your steps to the Versicombe Pine and go uphill on the sidewalk toward the end of the building, stopping at the incense cedar. Under the incense cedar, at number 27, is a tree with red bark like that of young cherry trees. Branches like those of eastern redbud, and leaves looking like smaller and rounder river birch leaves. This is water birch, scientific name Betula occidentalis, native to the western U.S. and western Canada. This tree is the only one on the tree tours, and is sort of tucked away under the incense cedar. This tree was hard to spot because it is both overgrown and has all sorts of vegetation around it but the tree hunter ferreted it out. This concludes the Around the Nevada Historical Society tree tour. Thank you for joining me on this tour. If you would like to support the Arboretum, please see the options on the donate link on the UNR Arboretum website.